All right, welcome back to the How to Make a Game series. In this section, we're gonna start working on some actual code. So right now we've got our project set up with a dragon that falls and rolls off of a stump. If we watch him, you see he lands, rolls, and falls down. But we wanna make him fly, we want him to jump, and we need to actually write some scripts of our own to do that. So we're gonna start off by going into the Assets folder. We'll just click right here. And then we have an Art and a Scenes folder. What I usually like to do now is create another folder for my scripts. So I'll right click and hit create. And just remember, right click anywhere in this gray area, I'll give us the context menu. I'll hit create and I'll go up to the top and choose folder and I'll just name it scripts. There we go and hit enter. The casing doesn't necessarily matter but I like to make them all match. Now I'm gonna go into that folder. I could just hit enter or double click on it to go into there or I can even click over here. And it says I've got an empty folder. This is where we're gonna create all of our code for this game. So I'll right click in this area, hit create again, or select create, and then choose C sharp script. It's the second one from the top. I'll click on that, it's gonna give me a new script and it's gonna have a default name of new behavior and it's in edit mode so I can start typing. And I'm gonna name this jump. This is gonna be my dragon script for jumping. It's just gonna handle jumping. So I'm gonna name it jump with a capital J. Again, the casing doesn't necessarily matter, but it's good practice to keep it cased like this with a capital J and lowercase UMP. Now I wanna open this up. I can do that by hitting enter on it or just double clicking. If it doesn't open for you, just try double clicking again. Perhaps you may, may have missed it. Sometimes it clicks too slow or it goes into edit mode. Now my code has opened up in a code editor called Visual Studio made by Microsoft. If you're on a Mac, it may be a slightly different editor. The editors keep changing. And if you're on Windows, it could be a newer version of Visual Studio even. Or sometimes I like to use JetBrains Writer IDE for this. It doesn't really matter what your editor is. It's gonna look pretty similar. And you should have a class file that says jump.cs with text that looks very similar to this. Now I'm gonna zoom in and kind of hide all of this extra stuff so we can just focus on what really matters. Let's zoom right in here. So I hold down control and use the mouse wheel, by the way, to do my zooming. Mouse wheel by itself scrolls up and down, control and mouse wheel does a zoom. So let's take a peek here. We have a public class named jump. This is the name that we gave it. This is the part that we really care about. We care about jump and we care about some stuff down here in the update. All the rest of this, not super important. In fact, I'm gonna clear it out just so that you can see the stuff that we actually care about. So we'll delete out this first line and to delete a whole line, I can just go to the beginning of it, hold shift and hit delete. And then I can do that again on that second one. Both of those grayed out lines were unused. That's why they were grayed out. We also don't need this entire start section. So I'm gonna go from line five down to line nine and just delete those. And I'm gonna get it all the way down to looking just like this. So we have a public class named jump and we have a void update on line six, and then this little section here on line five is actually a comment. This doesn't run, it's just notes for us where we can read them and kind of know what's going on, or we can even add in our own notes. Like I can hit enter and say, I added another comment. Nothing special, it's just a way to keep notes and keep track of what's going on. Usually I don't fill it up too much with those, but they can be helpful when you're getting started. So it says here on our note that update is called once per frame and we have this on line six void update. Now if you're wondering what this is, it's actually just a method. This is a line of or a section of code that will run every frame. It says once per frame. Now frame is every time we render our game. So if we're running at 100 frames a second, this update's gonna call 100 times a second. If we're on a really slow device and we're getting like three frames a second, update will get called three times a second. But this is where we can put our code to handle our interaction with our jumping dragon and make him actually jump. To do that, we wanna go down to line eight. Everything that's in between these squiggly braces is the code that's gonna run during this update. All right, now let's write some code. So we're gonna click on line eight. I'm just gonna click over here so that it's tabbed in nicely. And we want to check here to see if the player has pressed the jump button. So we're gonna use a special statement called if. We'll type that in with a lowercase if. And then we need an open parentheses, which is hold down shift and hit nine. And notice that it automatically added the closing parentheses afterwards. It's just a nice benefit of a good code editor. And we wanna check something on the input system. To do that, we're gonna type in the word input with a capital I and then hit period. And we should get a nice autocomplete list of 
the things that are available to us from the input system. You see, we have an any key, any key down, a compass, a whole bunch of different things. We want to look for get button down. Notice there's also a get button and a get button up. The main difference here is that get button down is going to work when we click it the first time. Get button up happens when you release a button. And get button is true every frame that you're holding it down. So if we did it on get button, we'd be spamming a jump every frame. So we only want to do it on get button down. Now I can just click on this, double click it, or I can hit enter. And then I'll hit uh, shift and nine again for another open parentheses because we need to pass in a parameter for the button name to this get button down method. Get button down is a lot like this update. It's just a method on our input system. Now, if we look here, you'll see that it's auto completed and giving us a little dialog saying it needs a string named button name. Now a string is just text. So we need quotation marks around it. We'll hold down shift and it's the quotes which are right next to enter. And then we need to give it the name of the button. The default button for jump is gonna be our fire one button. We'll put that in with a capital F, I, R, E, and then the number one. So what's gonna happen now is if the player has pressed the fire one button, whatever code we put on the next line will run. So I'm gonna hit enter at the end of the line. Make sure that you've gone to the end of the line. Don't do it here. Go all the way over and then hit enter. We'll get a new line on line nine. Line nine will run every frame when the player has pressed the fire one button. So what do we wanna do on line one? Well, we want our rigid body, that component that we added. Let's go take a peek at it real quick. If we go over here and we look at our blue dragon, we have this rigid body 2D component and we want it to add force to make us jump up. So let's go back to our script. I'll just double click the jump script again. And we need to get the rigid body component with a special method called get component. Pretty easy to use, right? Nice name for it. So say get component. And then we need the less than sign. That's shift and the key just to the right of M. And it's gonna automatically add the greater than sign. And we use this, notice it has a T in there. We use the greater than, less than around a class type to specify a specific type or a component that we're gonna get. And we wanna get the rigid body 2D component. So go rigid body 2D, oh look, auto complete. This is the way I do it most of the time, by the way. Don't just type it out, find it, and hit enter. I got the rigid body 2D. Now make sure that you don't get rigid body. If you do, this is not gonna work. You're gonna run into problems, get confused, and struggle with it. Make sure that it's the 2D with the capital D. Now at the end, we need to move just to the right of that greater than symbol. We need to add another parentheses. So shift nine, and it automatically added the closing parentheses. I'm gonna move to the right. What that's doing here is saying, hey, get this component. And then the parentheses is kind of like the thing telling it to execute that, like go do this, and then we'll have a component that we can use. Now, we wanna use that component, we'll hit period, and we can call a method on it. So we'll scroll up to the top and look for add force. It's actually all the way at the top. Notice that these are in alphabetical order. So I'll click on it and I'll just hit enter. And again, we need another open parentheses, which was shift and nine. And then finally, we need to give it a force amount. So this is the amount that we want to add to our dragon to make him go flying away. You might wonder like, what the hell should this value be? I don't know, how are we gonna figure it out? Not a problem. What we're gonna do is use a variable instead. So we'll call this jump force. I'm just gonna type out the words jump force, just like that. Now we have a lot of red squiggly lines. If you're not used to a code editor, you might be thinking, hey, this is probably just spelled wrong. These look like the spelling errors, right? They're not actually though. We have two errors here and we put the mouse over, we can see what they are. The first says that the name jump force does not exist in the current context. Show potential fixes. It says alt enter or control period. Well, let's try that. So I'm gonna select it and I'll just hit control period. And it gives me a couple options. I can generate a property, generate a field, a read only field or a local. And I'm gonna pick generate field. And the reason for this is that I like to shortcut things and do it faster. And once you get used to the hotkeys, this becomes a whole lot quicker. So I'll hit generate field and watch around line five. Notice that we got a new field here. This is a variable. It's a private vector two. Now a vector two is just a two dimensional vector. It's an X value and a Y value that we use kind of like on a coordinate plane. If you're familiar with fifth grade math, you'll see that um, we have a coordinate plane with an X going right and left and a Y going up and down. And that's what this jump force is. And you'll see that in just a moment. So we've got this jump force value and then we have our little red squiggly that's moved. 
So this now, it was up here, now it's down here. And if we put the mouse over, you see it says semicolon expected. It's kind of hard to see because it's very, very tiny there. But what it's telling me is that the line above this, the line before this squiggly brace is missing the semicolon at the end. Now that's the key just to the right of L. Just add that in with no shift and it'll fix things up. Notice that it automatically fixed up my indenting. It got rid of the error and that's pretty much it, I guess. But the key point here is that at the end of any statement where we want it to do something, so if we're adding force or we're telling it to move something or do any specific thing, assign a value, we need a semicolon at the end. The cases where we don't are where we're asking a question. So here, if we have like this if statement, when we're asking it something, we don't need a semicolon. But when we're telling it to do something, we need a semicolon to say this is the end of the command or the statement that we need to do. Now we have one last thing to do in here. We're gonna change this jump force variable from private to something a little less private. We're gonna make this public. We're gonna save that and then we're gonna go back over to the editor. So I hit control S to save or go to file and save all should do it save off this file then we'll go back into unity and we're going to select our blue dragon again now it may take a moment see the little spinner down there that shows that unity is updating our code it's recompiling now if we didn't get that if something looks wrong and it's not quite working you may have an error down below i need to take a peek go to the console tab and just look and see if there's an error there in fact let's go introduce one before we go further Let's go remove this semicolon. I'm just gonna do this. You don't have to follow along if you don't want to. And I'm gonna save with that error. And then I'm gonna go back into Unity and let's see what that looks like. Oh, look, there we go. Now it didn't compile. And if I hit play, it's gonna say, hey, there's an error. And if I look at the console tab, it's gonna say jump.cs on line 11. That's what that 11 is. At character number 60, there's an error. Now the error number, not usually very helpful, but sometimes they're useful to Google if you're not sure what it is. But in this case, it's just saying it's a semicolon expected. So that's the error, this is the file, and this is the line number. That's the most important part here. The file and the line number will really help you kind of figure out the problem. Now, if we double click on the error, it'll take us right back here, and I'll add that semicolon, save, and we'll go back into Unity. Let's hit play and see what happens, see if we can jump. So we hit play, and I'm just gonna start clicking on the game view once it goes and nothing happens. We're getting close. Let's scroll down. Look at our blue dragon. We haven't actually added our jump script to him. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to my project view and I'm gonna take this jump and I'm just gonna drag it right onto the inspector with the dragon selected. So notice I have the dragon selected or you no, know let's drag it right on top of the dragon right here. Drop it right there and notice that it added it as a component. Now I'm gonna remove this. Say I accidentally dropped it on the wrong thing. I right click and hit remove component, it'll go away. Now maybe I wanna add it again a different way. Okay, I'll hit add component, again with the blue dragon selected, and I can start typing. Start typing J-U-M-P, and hit enter, and it auto-completed. You probably didn't see that because the auto-complete was just off the bottom of the screen though. Not super helpful, right? Anyway, let's take a peek again. So we've got our script here, we've got our jump force, and we hit play. What do you think is gonna happen? I'll click and still nothing. All right, we've got one more little change to do. We need to actually assign a value to our jump force. Now remember, X on a coordinate plane is left and right. Oh, I did that wrong, left and right. And then Y is up and down. So we wanna give it a Y value and we want it to be a positive Y value to go upward. Now, you could try experimenting with different values. I'm going to put in a value of 500 because I've played with this enough to know that 500 feels pretty good. I'll hit play and then start clicking. And you'll see that I now bounce up and down and I can even roll on that and bounce and go flying forward. Lots of fun, right? Oh, can I click and get back on there? Went flying way off the screen. So there we go. We've got a simple script that allows us to jump. We fall down. We hit things, we kind of roll around, and you have the ability now to just play with this jump force. Try out some different values, see what feels right, what feels good for you. I, like I said, I think 500 is pretty cool, but you may want to go lower, higher, and you may want to just try out some of the different like insane values. A lot of people like to start off with 10,000 or one and just bounce around and try things out. So experiment a little bit. When you're ready to move on, we'll start killing our dragon. We'll start doing a whole lot of other things, making things move left and right. Just come over to the next section and 
we'll dive into it. Also, make sure that you hit like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff if this kind of thing is interesting. And just drop a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions or problems going through this.